This is One on One. We're with our uh, good friend George Anastasia, who's the uh, author of Gotti Rules, uh, John Elite. Um, former Gotti family member the, uh, was just with us and his book is Gotti Rules, the story of John Elite, Junior Gotti and the demise of the American Mafia. Um, switch gears. Okay. Appreciate the interview you did with John. Stay yeah. right there. But here's my question. This is how many books have you written about uh, the Mafia? Five. Five. Five books. Yeah. The glorification of organized crime, the Mafia more specifically. What impact has that all had with the movies, television shows, all of it, on the reputation, your opinion, of Italian Americans in this country? Well, yeah, I get that criticism a lot that I'm reinforcing this stereotype. I didn't say criticism. No, well, the, you the, put the books in with The Sopranos, The Godfather, Goodfellas. Right. You put them all in together. Yeah, yeah I mean it's it's all part of the same story. But yeah. from where I'm well, sitting, well, you you write you don't write fiction. You write nonfiction. Right. But everything grows out of, right. out, of the, out of the reality of it. To me, I, I don't see it the way some other folks do. And my, my flip response to, to any of this, I mean, this used to come up when The Sopranos was a very popular sure. show. And I like The Sopranos. Same and my, here. My answer was any ethnic group that can give America Antonin Scalia and Camille Paglia in the same generation doesn't have to worry about Tony Soprano being its poster boy. I mean, we know who we are. We know what we've done. And, and the mafia is just a small part of that whole Italian-American experience. But George, devil's advocate. Yeah, sure. Because I love The Sopranos, Goodfellas, and, and your books, yeah. you know what kind of fan I am. But you talk about Scalia, you talked about uh, Camille Paglia, great writer. The vast majority of Americans don't know who she is or even understand who Scalia is. And my point is, for a lot of people, that's who we are, what they see. No, well, I don't think. You don't for, think that's true. I don't think for a lot of people, and and I think we get off track if we worry about people who buy. You mean Italian Americans? Yeah, who we get as Italian Americans Go get off track if we worry about people who buy into stereotypes, because you're never going to convince those folks. You know, there's a great mo a great line in a, a not so great movie called uh, "Good Morning Babylon." Vincent Spano and a, and another mm. guy played Italian immigrant carpenters. They're working on it on a set in Hollywood building sets and the foreman is a German American whatever he's berating Spano and he says to him who do you think you are and Spano's brother stands up and says we're the sons of the sons of the sons of da Vinci and Galileo and Dante whose son are you I mean we have to know where we come from Gay Talese in an opening of a, a magazine piece greatest, about one of the greatest writers Frank of the Costello century. he's writing about Frank Costello and he and he opens the magazine Frank piece Costello one of the great I'm not great right. one of the mobsters right. who refused to testify before the right. Kefauver Commission right. So he, he opens the magazine piece with an anecdote about a, a little Italian boy in, in Little Italy at the, uh, after the turn of the century running to his father because the Irish and American and English kids are criticizing him and calling him a wop and a dago. And the father puts the boy on his lap and he says, Angelo, my son, just remember, this country was named after one Italian, discovered by another Italian, and we were giving art and culture to the world when the English were still living in caves and painting their faces blue. You have to know who you are. And if you know who you are, none of this matters. I mean, you know, Andrew Cuomo, uh, Mario Cuomo, we, there, there are, look at entertainment, look at yes. politics, look at the Supreme Court. There are only nine George, justices. I hear you, and I'm Two are Italian Americans. I'm with you, and I, we did one of the greatest interviews we ever did in 2002 was with Mario Cuomo. In fact, we just aired it after his passing, and I'm sure we'll air yeah. it again. And Peter Rodino, one of the great interviews sure. we did in the House Judiciary Committee, the Nixon impeachment proceedings. However, there are times, truthfully, that I will feel guilty for my obsession with, in uh. my interest in my, but I would call it a, an obsession with not just The Godfather, but Goodfellas and, and The Sopranos and everything connected to organized crime. And I know more than I probably should. Mm, well, and I ask myself, am I contributing to it? And you say, don't make, don't make a big well, deal about I, it. I think the mafia has taken the values of the Italian American experience, honor, loyalty, and a strong sense of family and they've bastardized it to their own ends and used it to justify who they are. I mean, one of the most, one of the little things. Because they're not that loyal. Yeah, one of the little things from this book, when I wrote about it, John Gotti Jr. was formally initiated to the mob at a making ceremony on Christmas Eve. Now, all You're over America. You're supposed to be with your family eating fish. All over America, Italian Americans right. were celebrating the seven, seven right, fishes. Seven fishes. He's over there getting made. I mean, you know, that's who he is, but it's not who we are. Actually, the irony is, in many ways, for a lot of these guys, their family was the family on the streets. 
And the real, they ignored or, or did not serve the real family. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's very disingenuous, but they use the Italian-American culture, the Italian-American experience to kind of justify who they are. That's not who we are. And in Philly, right, which you know well, Italian-American culture, how strong today? South Philadelphia was the, the epicenter. It's no longer because everybody's going out yes. to the suburbs. But, yeah, it's, you know, you're identified by your, your parish, not by your street. That's right, you know, by your parish. Yeah, that's the parish you're in. And the, by the of, church you got. Yeah, <laughs> one of the oldest Italian-American churches in America is in South Philadelphia. So, you know, all of that's part of the, the culture that you come up with. And even when you go to the suburbs, you remember that. But I, I've always had to have this discussion, that yeah. debate, whatever. Uh, I don't think I'm reinforcing a stereotype. I think I'm shining a light on the negative, small negative part of the experience. And we ought to know who it is, what it's about, and we ought to demystify it. And that's what I try to do. But finally, yeah. who you are as a writer, as a professional, so much of it is a product of being Italian-American. Oh, abs absolutely. I, mean, I think, it, you know, the, the passion, the, the sense of caring, all of that comes from the Italian-American experience. Absolutely. I'm proud of that. I don't, I don't try to hide that. That's, I mean, I think, and, and over here talking like this, <laughs> that's, that's who I am. I can't do this when I'm writing. I got to type, but yeah, that's. Yeah, when, you, when you're learning public speaking, I, I teach public speaking. People say, what do I do with my hands? I say, you use them. Yes. <laughs> They're we, tools, right? We can put a time behind your back. Yeah, absolutely. Um, listen, I cannot thank you enough. Um, you've been with us many times in public broadcasting, and I encourage people to read Gotti Rules, uh, your fifth book, George Anastasia. You're one of the great not just Italian-American writers, one of the great writers in this country. And, Thank you, uh, Steve. You're welcome back anytime. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Courtney. Appreciate it. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by New Jersey Manufacturers, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital, Qualcare Inc., the law firm of Gibbons PC, United Airlines, and by New Jersey Natural Gas. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.